Hi, welcome to Pop Out Workshop. The question that I want to ask today is how do you hold your project down to your honeycomb work table? From talking to the folks on the forums, there's a lot of different methods that people use. One of the simplest ways that I have found is to use a small little hold down pin like this. They're very easy to make and to be able to do this project, I use a very simple uh, software package that's free that you can do these types of designs and a whole lot more. Hold down pens, in my opinion, are not only an important thing to have, I believe they're a necessity because with the plywood, oftentimes it's not flat and you're not gonna have that material lay flat on your honeycomb workboard. This first pen that I'm doing is strictly for fun. I did not change a single thing in the uh, software other than save it as a light burn file and so I knew it was going to uh, be too big but I wanted just to see what it was going to look like. The one thing that I really found out is that very few people use a pen like this to be able to hold down their project and ideally it just slips into this honeycomb and holds the material down and you can put it virtually anywhere that you wish. Now I knew this first pen wasn't going to work but I wanted to test out the software. So let's dive into the software. The software that I'm going to use is free. It's boxes.py and this is something that I had seen a couple of times on some of the forums. Also the Louisiana Hobby Guy shared this um, particular software where he made a little paper holder. Well this can do so much more and today we're going to look at some of the different things it's going to do. Right here on the parts and supplies I'm going to scroll down and there is a laser holder pen right there and that's what I used to start my first experiment. So it's time now to go in and change the settings and set up a pen that will actually work. Because this first one, way too long, it's a little bit too narrow for this particular honeycomb. Now this was the first pen that I made and it was too long. And this one is the second pen. Now you can see it definitely was shorter and it's a little bit wider but it still needs to be shorter now even though the board itself is 22 millimeters, 20 was still a little bit long. So I'm going to change this down to 18. Now this one that I had just made was 6.5 millimeters uh, for the shaft width. I want to go ahead and put it at the 7. That is what the manufacturer said on the honeycomb. Uh, work table said that those uh, little honeycombs are at the 7 millimeters. Now everything else is going to stay the same. The uh, thickness of the plywood, all of those settings will remain. So now that the settings are done, I'm just going to go ahead and generate the file. Now this saves as the light burn file. You can see it right there at the bottom left. Then I will go over and load that into the light burn. And that's really all that's necessary. So I minimized the box software, opened up the light burn software, and brought this file in. This is how it looks when you first open up the file. I'm going to go ahead and put it on the red layer. That's what I use for the cut layer. Then I'm going to delete the scale and all that's left is the pen itself. From there, check out the settings, make sure. And I'm going to be using the 5 inches per minute with 100% power. And I'm going to go ahead and use the two passes to be able to cut this out. And you're set. You're done. There is nothing else that you need to do other than send the file over to the laser. Now I just moved the laser over a little bit and I'm going to cut out this next little laser pen right here in this area. So first thing, just to make sure, let's go ahead and frame this and make sure that it's going to fit right where I want it. And then we'll go ahead and cut it out. And the frame is perfect. So yeah, that looks good. So I'm just going to grab the glasses. We're going to hit start and we're going to cut this one out. And again, this is with two passes. Now I'm also using uh, five inches per minute and that works out to be about 127 millimeters per minute. And of course I'm using 100% power to be able to cut this, uh, cut this little pen out. Now right now I'm not using anything to hold this plywood down. And you can actually see that plywood lift up just a little bit. And when it does that, that puts the focus point off and it may not cut all the way through. We'll see what happens. But I'm just going to go ahead and hold this down and um, hopefully we'll be able to save it and this little pen will cut out. Well it's all done now so let's take a look. I'm just going to grab the plywood, see if this little pen will drop out 
and we're going to see how it fits. And I'll flip it over on the back side and you can see what I'm talking about. With the two passes and that plywood raising up like that, it didn't quite cut out. So that is one more reason why having these little hold down pins are so important. Well, I decided to go ahead and change it to three passes. Everything else stayed the same, the five inches per minute or 127 millimeters per minute with the 100% power. And I think this will go ahead and allow it to cut all the way through. And this is one of the reasons I say that doing the experiments is always a very important aspect of being able to make sure that everything is just right. Well, it finished this one. Let's take a look and see how it works now. Okay, you can see that this one is actually much better and it will just push and just come right out. And that's what you want to be able to have happen. So that's going to be a success. Just to double check, I'm going to put this in the honeycomb and it holds very well. Okay, with all the testing done, it's time to make a whole batch of these. So let's back to the software. At this point, this pen is going to work really well. I want to be able to take a 5x5 five five square because that's the space that I have left on this scrap piece of plywood. And I want to fit about a dozen of these pins into that area. I'm also going to take and put this square on a tool layer. And that's going to be where it'll frame, but it's not going to be able to cut out anything. Now there's a number of ways to be able to group these together. I could use the array tool and just set it up as all 12, but then again, you waste a lot of plywood. So I think what I'm going to do is just take just a moment and highlight each one of them and nest them together. Now I'm not trying to maximize the space totally. What I want to be able to accomplish is simply have 12 of them in this space of a 5 inch by 5 inch and that's going to be easy to accomplish. So by grouping this first three of the pins together then I can just copy and paste and put the other uh, group into this same space. Now you also can hit Control D and that will duplicate it and then you can just slide it over. And this was an easy way to be able to get four groups of three pins. So that's my 12 that I want for this um, little 5x5 five five square. Now that I have my 5x5 five five square set, I'm going to delete the rest of these pins on the outline area. I'm going to go ahead and use two of the pins that I had already made. Now these pins are not a perfect fit, so I had to put a little space in there and adapt them just a little bit, but I think it's going to hold the plywood down. This 5x5 five five area is the bottom left hand corner. That's where all the pins will be cut. So let's frame this. Go ahead and hit the shift key and the frame button on the Lightburn software and you can't really see the light um, in there, but that is going to be the area that's going to be engraving. So that's going to work out real well. The pins are in a safe location, so they're not going to be um, in the way. And although it's not perfect, it holds it down much better than with nothing at all. This plywood is actually rather warped. All that's left to do at this point is grab the glasses and hit start. As this is cutting out, I can look at it and actually see that these pins are loose. In fact, this one I can literally just lift out. I have to be real careful even with those pins uh, holding the plywood because I don't want that plywood to move. But you can see that pin just lifted right out. And that's a good, perfect uh, pin. And now what I'm going to do is clean it up and stick it right back into the plywood to be able to hold down this plywood even better. Now these pins are working perfect. So this is going to be a great addition to the uh, shop to be able to have these hold down pins with this honeycomb work table. Now close, you can see how the pins are working. I went ahead and put this one right up at the very edge so that it'll hold that plywood down. That way I don't need my hand there anymore. And I really didn't like having my hand holding the plywood down because you still run the risk of moving. These pins hold the plywood flat to the work table perfectly. When I picked up the board, most of them just fell out. The remaining is a little bit tight, but they came out fairly easily. 12 pins should be plenty for any project that I do. I'm going to throw away the first test pieces because I don't want them mixed up and with my 12. Now that I know that these pins work real well, I want to save this file. And to be able to do that, I want to go into the art library, click on new, because that'll create a different category. And I'm going to type in jigs and templates. That way, all of the future jigs and templates that I create, I can save in one place. 
Now that I have the folder, let's go over, click on the jigs and templates, and open that up. And you see nothing is there at the moment. I have the file highlighted, and with this all grouped together, all I need to do is come down to this Import Graphics from the Project. Type in a new name. You can name this anything you want. I'm just going to put Laser Hold Down Pins, and that should work just fine. Once you have that name, just go ahead and click OK. That will put the file over into your art library. Using the same file, I went ahead and designed a little box that I can cut out. I want to test these laser hold down pins just to see how effective they are. In an upcoming video, I'm going to show you exactly how I designed this box and made the modifications necessary so that this box would do exactly what I want it to. But for now, it's all about the laser hold down pins and to see if they're effective. So please subscribe to the channel and hit that little bell notification so that you'll be notified on the videos that I'm uploading because this is going to be very exciting on exactly how I designed this little box. But for now, let's go ahead and get this box cut out. Now I decided to swap out the machines to the Sculpin S9 because I wanted to be able to show you just how easy it is to be able to switch and put the air assist from the Diwali on to another machine. And literally, it just slips on like that with this little bracket that you have here. And that's the little set screw. And that's it. And we'll tighten that down. Once tightened, then I'll just adjust the air assist nozzle and it'll be done. Get down real close. You can see that nozzle will point directly at the uh, plywood where that laser beam will hit and it's just held in position with that little set screw and then you can adjust the height that you need with the other set screw. So it's a very, very simple transition and now we have the Diwali air assist on this Sculpin S9 laser. Now to be able to make sure that you keep the air hose out of the way, I just took a couple of twist ties and secured it to the cables and that way as the cable moves, the hose will move and that will take care of managing the hose with the cable. I also used my laser hold down pins to secure this plywood. I'm ready to be able to cut this little box out now. First thing is to frame it. I want to make sure that the pins will clear and they will. Look, I pass right next to that one. And I want to make sure that everything is going to fit exactly where I want it on this piece of plywood. You can easily see these laser hold down pins and they are definitely working exactly as designed. I like the fact that it has a low profile so that literally I can get these pins close to where I'm actually cutting out the material. And that way it maximizes the ability to hold that plywood in place. I want to give you a close up view on where the laser is passing right next to that low profile laser hold down pin. That is absolutely perfect. And it's definitely keeping this plywood, even though this plywood was bowed, these hold down pins are keeping it flat. Another definite benefit of having these hold down pins, besides just keeping it flat, it's actually making it where the laser is more effective. These parts could be cut out in two passes rather than three easily, and they're just going to fall out. This is absolutely fantastic. Over the past, I have from time to time had problems uh, with the plywood being uneven and not completely flat. Well, this definitely has solved the problem. I think from looking at this project so far, all of these pieces are just going to fall out when I pick this plywood up. Well, let's find out. Let's slide the laser out of the way. We'll remove these pins and let's see what happens. I like how easy it is to be able to put these pins in and remove to be able to gain access to the work. I'll set these aside now. And let's take a look. Let me lift up the plywood and you can see that a lot of these pieces are just dropping right out. That's what I was hoping for. So not bad at all. Now these last three pieces took just a little bit of help to be able to remove them. But still not bad. I like how this turned out. And for only three pieces that needed just a little bit of extra help, 
That is fantastic. Now, as I had said earlier, I'm going to show exactly how I designed this box and be able to use this in the upcoming video. So please don't forget, hit that little bell notification and the subscribe button so that you will be aware of when this next video comes out. Well, as far as this video, total success. I love these laser hold down pens. And if you like this video, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. I look forward to seeing each and every one of you in the next video and it's coming out shortly on how to design this box. For now, bye-bye.